My name is Hedal Mazzucchi and I'll be talking about something of yours and that's the paradox of happiness. But first, I wanted to talk about a question I've asked many of my friends. But the answers are so unusual. You think it would be so simple but it seems complicated for people. And that's, are you happy? You know, you think, oh yeah, I feel happy right now. So why wouldn't I be happy? At the same time, they always hesitate. It seems like there's something going on. They can never actually say yes. But the people I do realize say yes are actually the older people, which I do find very interesting. But first, we need to understand something, and that's the definition of happiness. Now, what does being happy mean? Well, the simple answer is it's the state of being happy. But at the same time, someone could be in a state of happiness, but at the same time, not actually be happy. And what do I mean by that? I mean, for example, someone could be eating a chocolate, you know, the chocolate is actually making them happy, I guess, makes them feel good. But at the same time, in the person, they're actually depressed. That can happen. And that brings me to this. The paradox of happiness. Where someone can be happy and unhappy at the same time. So what's really going on? What leads to this paradox that happens with the people? And first, I wanted to talk about my own journey to true happiness. I think this could be a good way for us to explain how the difference between happiness and actual true happiness. First and foremost, I'd like to explain my own journey to being happy to being truly happy. And I think this can give us a bit of background on what it truly means. Now, the best way to explain this is through a metaphor of Jeffrey and Adonis. I to add those the end. Jeffrey is the type of person who is always lazy. He never really works for himself. You'd see him always watching movies, playing video games for many hours, and through it feels the frost. But on the other hand, Adonis. Adonis is the peak of man. He is the example for everyone. He is what you want to be like. He is strong. He is disciplined. He is everything that a man needs to be. He works on himself every day. He goes to the gym. He reads. He grows every day and tries to be the best version of himself. That what it is. And now I want to explain my own journey on how I came from Jeffrey to closer to Adonis. Now, before, I was like most people. My days would consist of school, then playing video games for many hours, and then sleeping, then school, playing video games many hours, watching movies, anime, and that would kind of be it. I wouldn't have much going, there was not much going for me. I didn't have a drive. I felt purposeless. I felt like, I felt empty inside. I felt like there was nothing. But then, I bought my gym membership, and this changed everything for me. It taught me something which was very important. And that's growth. It taught me that the person can actually improve on themselves, and I can actually work hard and gain some actual results. To me, this was a first time experience where I could actually work on something in real life and it could lead to something within me in life getting better. To me, this was life changing. So I started going to the gym and I took it very seriously. Worked work every day, every day to the, gym, to the gym. And I also started reading books because knowledge is key. And with knowledge, I'm able to understand what the old people of wisdom would be talking about how to improve on oneself, what they thought of self-improvement, and how they would improve on themselves as well. And the third was, I just had it. I was just more positive after becoming, uh, becoming more active, becoming more disciplined, doing all these things. Mentally and physically, I would feel better. I would be doing better on everything else I would do. But I think now we need to talk about what are actually the components of true happiness. What makes someone too happy? What can actually lead to that? And it's three things. Purposelessness, 
contentment and acceptance of change. First, let's go with purpose. Purpose is probably the most important part. Because without the goal, what's the point of the world? What you see, when you have a goal, when you have that purpose in front of you, you can kind of build everything around it to be like, okay, this is what I want to do. Let me do everything to reach this one goal. And this is where you can have a clear mind, a clear goal which you can go to. And that's one of the most important things. Just hearing the word purpose gets me shivel, makes me excited. Now, second is contentment. But this is not the contentment that most people talk about. Most people we are like, be happy the way you are. I actually disagree with that. I think you should be happy the way you are as long as you are trying your best to improve on yourself. You can't be telling yourself, oh, I'm content, I'm happy, when you're not working on yourself, when you're just sad, when you're not even doing anything. Yeah, okay, you're gonna feel content, but that's not gonna help you. You should be content as long as you're trying your best. Because with patience comes everything. It just has to be a feeling as long as I'm trying my best, and things should be going on. Well. Or things will be leading to something going well. The third, which is probably the most crucial part, is the acceptance of change. Change is something that many people will have a hard time with. Many people, they want to stay with the way you are, because change is hard. It's hard to change a big part of your life. You're so used to something. How can you just change it like that? It seems so difficult, but when you accept it, a very important component of true happiness comes in where you're like, okay, this is something I need to improve, let me change this about myself to make this improved. Uh, okay, now, this might sound contradicting, but don't chase happiness. Try not to be sad, try to have a positive mentality today, but don't chase happiness. But I just told you, you should try your best to be truly happy. But as you see, I was just saying how to be happy. I was not telling you just work that that's your goal. I told you you should find the purpose, right? When you're like, I want to be happy, so I'll do these things that make me happy. That doesn't work. You need to do something which makes you work hard to actually make you, which will actually give you happiness Why you want that world. Happiness is something that comes while you're working hard. It's not the result, it's the by factor. And now this is probably one of the biggest differences between happiness and true happiness. Instant versus delayed gratification. Now, let's define these two things. Instant gratification is the act of making yourself happy in the moment. For example, when you eat a chocolate bar, as I said before, eating a chocolate bar can make you happy. Oh my god, this tastes so good. But at the same time, you're watching a sad movie and it's making you cry. Yeah, you might be happy either eating the chocolate, but in reality, overall, you're not happy at all. You're actually depressed. But with delayed gratification, these are activities that require hard work, require pain, sweat, and blood actually to work to be put into it. And to, when you do that, that's when you actually feel good because you are working on yourself now to make your life harder later. Does that make sense? You are trying your best to make your future you have a better life. And this journey is what leads to you feeling content, feeling happy, feeling good about yourself. Like, I am doing my best. I have leverages within me which can tell me I'm doing my best. Now, how does one truly obtain happiness? Now, Hamdan, you, you might be asking me, Hamdan, you told me how to become happy, you've told me these components and what I should do, but what activities should I do, what should I actually do which I can actually make me happy? First, is you should be very, very prepared for change. That should be number one, that should be a priority. When you have that, then it's actually within you. you should just sit with yourself one hour, just one hour today. Sit with yourself and say, what are the things which I need to improve on myself, which I think are going to make me have a better life in the future. Uh, when you sit with yourself, because it's different for everyone. Everyone has different interests, everyone has different things which are better life. So if you just sit with yourself and say, okay, I want to be better. And then you actually think, okay, I have this thing, okay, I can go running, I can go to the gym, I can go read. These things will just come to your head because it's the first thing that can actually give your brain the time to think. Now, 
Truly, the answer is within you. You have to fight for it. Your journey is yours alone. Many people will leave, many people will come in, but the only one that's going to stay with you the whole time is you. So you kind of have to have this self, uh, you kind of have to talk to yourself about this, like what do I want to do? What kind of things are going to lead me to being happy? It is within you. Now, an upper opinion of mine is self-pity is an unneeded emotion. Now, I, I know that most of you would say it would disagree. And one of the reasons that they would is because the generation we live in is such a generation of peace, just be okay the way you are, you're amazing, don't worry about it, you go. That's the type of things that are taught by society. But something we need to realize is that that leads us to not change, it doesn't lead to any improvement. So I think it's actually unnecessary, it's unneeded. And actually, a quote of mine, which I made, is actually very, very important for the situation of women. And I'd like to read it out so you can kind of get an understanding of what I mean. Self-pity is an unneeded emotion. Make pushes to comfort and creates nothing but excuses. It makes the guilt and depression drown you so far that the light seems so far. And that light is self-transformation for a better tomorrow to life, become change, metamorphosis. Now, most people right now, when they're gonna come back home, they're gonna be like, I worked hard today, I think I've done enough. That's not what I'm going to do. Right as I finish this, there is no sleep here, there is no resting. No, I'm going to be hitting the gym right after I finish this. And that's gonna be how I live for the rest of my life. Just continue to go until I can use the goal. That purpose of mine. Thank you for listening and make change even if it means to the people close to you. Thank you.